Doctor of Travel. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, Tony. I am um, Omotishi. Hello, Brainstormy. Beat Hype. Hello, Queen Row. Hello. Good afternoon, guys, and thank you very much for joining in. Um, it's your one and only Waka Waka Doctor. And of course, um, today, like we always do, we're talking about everything travel. Uh, for those of you who are joining in for the first time, you're welcome. Um, I use all my social media handles to educate people as to how to move across to different countries spread all over the globe um, and so if you want to know how to move to different countries across the world all you need to do is send me uh, go on YouTube um, search for Waka Waka Doctor and of course you'd find me easily I have spoken about moving to more than 30 35 countries across the world Lithuania Portugal France the US the UK Australia Finland Norway Sweden New Zealand the Republic of Ireland Germany Georgia Japan China South Korea um, Italy Spain Switzerland Malta uh, the list is endless okay um, yeah any other waka waka doctor is a counterfeit thank you very much guys so over the last three weeks we've been talking about the united kingdom and how to move to the uk um, we started first by talking about how to move to the uk via um, the new healthcare visa that was launched in uh, february 15th it was launched launched on february 15th um, so if you missed that episode all you need to do is watch the video on my youtube channel i have the video there um, and then the last time we were here, we talked about the new scale-up visa that's due to be launched in March and the requirements and the whole process. I also have a video uh, on my YouTube channel about that. Okay. Today, we're talking about how to get jobs in the UK, um, irrespective of where you are. Now, I know that people always find it difficult when 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 they hear from me because some people some people do when i um when i make make some tweets they say ah you don't know how it goes you're not there blah 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 okay and that's why i always bring people who have had the experience who have done it so that you can hear from the horse's mouth you know it's better you hear from the horse's mouth how they did it and maybe that would encourage you and teach you and educate you as to how you can do it yourself so I wouldn't waste much of your time. Let's go to the crux of the matter. You know how this is done. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll get to answer as many questions as possible as we can. All right. So I'm going to bring my guest. I'm going to. Um, so that we can talk about everything you need. Hello, sir. Hi, Waka Waka Doctor. <laughs> It's nice to see you. Nice to see good, you. Good to see you. How are you? How are you? Both, both of us are using. We're both blind, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're both blind, but thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and coming on my platform. Sure. And talking, talking. I mean, to me. I mentioned before that I've been a huge fan. So maybe when I thank start, you. Talking, I'll let you know when I started following you and all of oh, the wow. that I've also gotten from your page while Fantastic. I was. So, yeah. Fantastic. And, and yeah. hopefully that would help someone. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, let's, let's get straight, straight. You are in the UK. You left Nigeria to the UK. When did you get to the UK? And what do you do at the moment in the UK? Um, so, before leaving um, Nigeria, I was working um, at a big four firm. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on a minute, just hold on a minute. People yeah. are complaining that my volume is low, so just give me a minute, oh, okay. okay? Let me fix this. <clears throat> okay, I'm... I think I think it's actually worse, but yeah, it's worse. <laughs> worse? Wow. 
Okay, now I can hear you. Now you can hear me, okay, yeah. better. So let, let's let start, um, rephrase the question. How, I mean, when did you move to the UK and what do you do in the UK at the moment? So I moved to the UK in, in October 2020. Um, I work um, with a big four accounting firm as uh, an external auditor. Um, prior to that, I was also still in the same line of work in Nigeria. So it was more of moving from, you know, the same line of work in Nigeria to another firm in the UK um, in the same line of work. So so, uh, so you work as an auditor and accountant? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You work as an auditor in the UK. Fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. you moved in 2020? Yes. October that was in the midst of COVID itself when things were so really... The, the, the same thing, I got the job offer December 2019. So obviously I would have come here like long before. But then COVID came and, you know, um, luckily the job held. So I was still able to come like in October 2020. So like 10 months from when I got the offer, that was when I was then able to travel. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So what people would like to hear is, how did you get the job? What, how, how, how exactly did you get the job? How yeah. did you apply? What was the process? The same, the same thing people tell you. When, when I first came here too, and when I meet like Nigerians and I tell them, oh, I got a job from Nigeria to come to the UK, they look surprised. Some of them ask me, are you a doctor or a nurse? Because those were like the usual professions that people expect to get a job from Nigeria. But then I then explain to them, no, no, I'm not a doctor. This is how I did it. And they seem quite surprised. So... Again, I think information is key, which is why I told you that I've, I've been following your page and it's necessary that if you are planning to make such a move, uh, like they say, follow people with no road. So follow a page like yours, get Thank the right you information, so know, know how you want to move and all the options that are available to you. Um, so for me, when we wanted, we planned to like move, what I did was, you know, to start um, looking for jobs here in the UK. And again, which is why I said information is key. Um, I, I know my wife recently put out a content about um, the shortage skill occupation list here in the UK, which is what's, which for me, because before moving here, I was equally trying other countries, Canada, Australia. In fact, I even got like a couple of interviews in Australia. I almost got a job there, but at the final stage, it didn't work out and stuff. So it was the same thing. I just checked the shortage occupation um, lists in Australia, in UK, so that my profession was there, do you get? And then the next thing, I started looking for jobs in my line of work in those countries. And it sounds, of course, it sounds like easy on paper, but that's pretty much it, to be honest. And so, you know, so what you did first was to look for the shortage occupation list in the UK. Yes. And you saw, you saw a list of all the jobs that they need in the UK. Exactly. And then based on the fact that I have experience in one of those you know, occupations, and that was like the go ahead for me. I then started looking for job, jobs in that sector. Like I said, it wasn't only just in the UK. Also in Australia, I was doing the same thing. I know you put out a content about Australia too, something similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I said, following a page like yours, because these things keep changing. Information is necessary if you are planning to make this type of move. So you need to like put yourself out there, follow sources that you know drop this sort of information so that you can keep yourself abreast of what's going on. So it was Fantastic. sort of okay. like... I will not say easy peasy because, of course, in the process, oh, you know, it's you never easy peasy. You get now. It's never easy peasy. You have to do that. your part. Yeah, but primarily, that's that's just it. I checked the okay. shortage occupation list. So, when you check the shortage occupational list, how did you find the company? How did you send the CV? How did you get interviews? What? How did that process go? Yeah. So again, once you find your your occupation on the list. The next thing is for you to start asking yourself. It could be a, a case of, you know, just, you know, checking like popular job websites. But for me, I used a different strategy. What I did was look for companies directly that, you know, needed um, people in that sector. Like recently, I was speaking to a friend. He's a brewery technician in Nigeria. If I, I'll give that as an example. So I just told him, guy, you can just apply this, look at the same strategy, go to the occupation list. Luckily, we checked there. It's there on the list. And I told him what you need so they to... are looking for beauty technicians as well. No, brewery, brewery. Oh, brewery, brewery technicians. Okay, okay, exactly. brewery technicians. Okay. So I told him, guy, this is the way. You can then look for companies in the UK, maybe like um, Diageo, which is the Guinness. 
look look at their check their website go to the career section and luckily we saw a few of those open positions i told him guy look at it clean up your cv and you know start applying do you get so that's like a simple example of how these things could work it could be an engineer you could be you know whatever profession you are in check the occupation list then target companies that are in that sector because being in the sector you should then know of course companies that are you know in that sector as well so you could do check you have an idea of the jobs that are on that list the shortage so some of the, some of the jobs not i know the list is long but do you have long. an idea <laughs> The list is long. <laughs> this is long. This is very long, which is why people need to like look at that list. And because it's it's a very thin line, you can just think to yourself that oh, there's no way I can apply for a job and get it um, from Nigeria. But trust me, these things happen. So I know a lot of things. Like I've just mentioned the bureau technician role, and if the person had not reached out to me, we wouldn't have known because of course I will not go there and start searching for all the jobs that are there. So he reached out to me that because he wanted to come through like school. I was not like, oh, okay, that's fine. You can keep that as a second option, but let's look at this other option. Because again, it's necessary if you are doing this type of thing, maybe don't put all your eggs in one basket. You can have maybe if you are trying for jobs, you're also maybe applying for maybe like a master's or something. So I said, okay, let's check here first and see. Because if you get a job, I mean, that's way easier. I mean, you're coming here, you're working already. It's not like you then come and start thinking of how to, you know, figure things out. So I told him, let's check. And we checked the occupation list. It was there. Then I just showed him an example. Okay, go to this company's website, check their career page, check if there's any opening for this position. And you begin to apply. Well, so you the shorted occupational list is so guys are asking that shorted occupation list you can find it on the gov.uk website and yeah. of course if you also just google shortage occupational list in the uk to come out um so my question now is from my own experience and i can be wrong but you have done it so you you're, you're in the right position to to educate people yeah. Some people say CV. The CV is a very important factor here when looking for jobs. Things like, you know, putting address, country, religion, and all those things. What, what, what would you say about that? I mean, to a very large extent, you need to cut out all of those um, irrelevant information, like religion. Um, I mean, there are things you can't hide. If you are in Nigeria looking for a job, you can't cut off your address. I mean... It's practically impossible unless you want to start lying. I mean, it was the point because you will even need sponsorship. So, of course, you can't take out your address. But all those things like age, um, religion, state of origin, to be honest, just clean, wipe all of those things out of your CV. Just, you can look for standard templates or if, you know, you don't have the time, you can, if you have the resources, look for people that, you know, do professional CV and you know clean up your cv and start applying for me i sort of went through the whole thing myself cleaned up my cv and um, started applying like i said things like references all of that just clean them off by the time you get a job they will definitely you know want to reach out to your previous employer so there's really no point clogging your cv with all of those um irrelevant those irrelevant things so, so references from the start from the start you got you got a sponsorship letter, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. From the start, you getting the um, you looking for the job mm -hmm. till your visa processing and everything. How long did the whole process take? Hmm. I mean, if you include the COVID, whatever, because <laughs> my own case was um, relatively delayed because of COVID. But let's say roughly one year plus, almost two years. So okay. again, like I mentioned. It sounded easy on paper, but by the time you start applying, you might get rejections here and there. But what I always tell people, don't relent. Do you get? Don't relent. Keep applying. The beauty of it is that for some of the ones where I got to the interview stage and didn't get the job, they actually called me and gave me feedback, right? And if it's something that people can equally ask for. So maybe you're lucky enough, you get an interview and you didn't get through to the final stage ask the recruiter for like feedback they, they do it it's something they do here like almost all the rejections i got that we got to interview stage i actually asked for feedback and they told me okay these are the areas where you know this is the reason why we didn't go further with you and all that so that you can then go back and sort of improve on your own or if it means you know rearranging your cv to make it <laughs> okay 
Oh, yeah. And another thing that, another question here is, were you able to move with your family when you got yeah. the job? Absolutely. Like once, once you have your certificate of sponsorship, it's easy peasy. We all applied for our visas together. The visa was approved for myself, my wife, my daughter. And from once you get, once you get a job in the UK, I mean, the rest is, the rest is history. <laughs> so the, wow. the are off, yeah. Okay. Did you need to write IELTS at all? That's another question here. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but most times you could like wait when you get an offer. I mean, there's the IELTS route and then there's the other route. Um, I think it used to be called NARIC, but it has changed recently. So it's just um, proof of English proficiency for your visa process. Um, for me, I think I didn't have my transcript handy then, so I didn't go the NARIC route. Well, I just preferred to write the IELTS straight up. I paid for the UK VI IELTS, wrote it, and, you know, just used the IELTS results for my visa application. Fantastic. Yeah. Another question that has come up is the proof of funds. You know, when we talk about education and applying for visas, people always come up with the need for the proof of funds. Yeah. Um, and for the UK, you probably need five, six, seven million naira. They're about about ten thousand pounds, so to say, something in that neighborhood. Um, when you were applying for your own visa, was there a need for proof of funds? How much proof of funds did you require? If yes, so for me, it wasn't needed because that's another thing. If you, depending on the your employer and the way they issue your certificate of sponsorship, so on my COS, it was stated that my employer would take care of my living costs for when I move in here. So. If you have that stated clearly on your COS, you don't need to show proof. It's even there on the um, UK Gov website that if your employer, yeah, indicates, so well, your employer has to now indicate it on your COS. So, I mean, these are some things you can look out for and maybe probably discuss with the employer if the funds are not there. I mean, if you have this information up front, it can help you when you get an offer, you can just tell them, okay. I mean, it's not like they gave me some crazy money and stuff, but they just stated it on the COS. And I was then able to move without having to show um, proof of funds. So, so basically, guys, the message is that you don't necessarily need proof of funds so long as your COS or the company that hires you states it clearly on the certificate of sponsorship that you are, you know, they're going to cater for your for your for your living expenses and all that. Someone is asking here, what's the meaning of certificate of sponsorship? <laughs> Um, so, how, how do I put this? So, by the time you get a job, right, that certificate of sponsorship just shows that you are employed. But like um, a UK um, employer has given has offered you a job, and then all you need is just the COS number when you're applying for your visa. You don't even need to print it or do anything with it. You just need the COS um, number issued to you. So, when you're applying for your visa, you impute that COS number, the place where they ask for it. You just put that certificate of sponsorship uh, number. Of course, it's issued by the government, so they will like go back end and verify it. And once you have that certificate of sponsorship, trust me, you're already in the UK. <laughs> you're already in you the are. UK. Okay. Now, uh, someone is begging here and saying, please, please, can you just list the process one after the other from okay. the start to the end? Okay, so beginning, like I mentioned, check if you are coming through the, if you want to come through the, you know, the work route, first thing, I, of course, I've mentioned that there are other methods. You always put out content on different ways, um, student visa, the current um, healthcare visa and all that. But if it's like, say, a two job, so the first step is check if your current occupation and experience is um, on the shortage occupation list, number one. After that, you then check for companies that are hiring for those occupation right so if for example you're an engineer you check that so um engineering is on that list then you check for companies that employ engineers or go to popular job websites like indeed and you know search for jobs in that your line of work maybe industrial chemist or whatever after that you start applying of course clean up your cv you start applying Hopefully, somewhere along the line, you could move on to interview stage. Then, of course, different companies have their different interview levels. For the companies we are interviewed with, it was around like three interviews. First one was usually with like 
a recruiter. It's usually very short, 10, 15 minutes. Then the next one will be with like maybe a senior manager in the company. And then the final one is usually with a director or from a partner. So those, those, that's like the routes I took then. So depending on the company, so you get interviews, of course you prepare, um, attend your interviews and if you are offered a job, easy peasy. Once it's gone through that you've been offered a job, that's then the next step would then be the immigration part where your company will issue you your certificate of sponsorship and then, <laughs> then use that COS to apply for your visa. So summarily, that's... Okay. Like, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm going to put you on the spot now and ask you this question. Maybe it will encourage okay. somebody or, you know, people listening. How mm. many jobs did you apply for before you got this one? <laughs> I've mentioned that maybe, I, I, maybe one day I'll just intentionally go and check my emails and, you know, collate all of the jobs and all of the rejections. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if I should put everything together, maybe 400, like... 400. To be honest, because there was a time... I mean, job search is like a job on its own, to be honest. At some point, it was what I was doing. I mean, if you want to do this, you have to take out time and, you know, put yourself there. It was like my weekend job. So what I do is I target to do like 20, 30 applications like saturday sunday so once i close from my regular work saturday sunday i go to my next job which is job search in the uk <laughs> so obviously it was like a weekend thing for me i just you know go to this company's website check for the ones i qualify for and start sending my application i mean some of them are heartbreaking i don't know once you send the application within five minutes they send you rejection yeah <laughs> so but then you just have to keep at it if if you know that obviously you've checked like this job um this job um, is on the shortage list and then you have the relevant work experience and um, qualification trust me just keep applying so guys um that are asking they want to know what field you're in is an auditor in the uk accounting accounting um accounting sector so to say money counting sector <laughs> it's not money counting Money. <laughs> so guys he made 400 applications 400 so if you are saying oh i submitted 20 i submitted 30 i submitted 40 it's not yeah, just coming yeah you are just starting because yeah. the truth is you are you are you are you are standing up against a lot of people a lot of people people who are already in the uk People who live in Europe, then before it comes to you, I so mean, you have to you have to continue. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole lot of people you are competing against. Like you said, they first they first have to consider people in the UK, and then before they even spread the net, Europe, um, you know, some other regions before, and of course, we know the perception they have about you know our part of the world. So you just have to keep at it. To be honest. Just, can, just I, can I ask you another question? Um, and you, you, you can deem fit, um, you, you might not answer this if you're, not on, if you're not comfortable with it, but someone is asking, do you have any special qualifications, a master's degree, a certification, or is it just your BSc? So, so funnily, my first degree is microbiology. I, I studied microbiology. <laughs> <laughs> So just, of course, you know the way it is in Nigeria. You finish and then most of my microbiologists are either in banks or <laughs> you know how it is. So we left and then we started looking for a job. Um, luckily, I got a job with a big four firm in Nigeria. And while I was there, I then started doing, so it's just my bachelor's degree I have. And then I started doing um, the regular writing accounting exams. So I started writing ACCA. But then, don't be discouraged. If you have ICANN, ICANN is totally and 100% recognized here in the UK. So don't bother yourself if you have ICANN already. For me, I started writing ACCA. So that's like the additional professional qualification I get. So if you are in the accounting profession and you have your ICANN, easy peasy. Don't bother to say you want to switch to um, ACCA if it's the UK you are coming to. I know for maybe Canada, you might, you know, want to switch to ACCA and then switch to CPA. But for the UK, your ICANN is 101% recognized. I need to ask you this and be sincere, be honest. <laughs> Are you happy? Are ah. you happy you made that move? I mean, who wouldn't be happy? <laughs> 
to be honest, because this is like the first time I am like sitting down and carrying out my passport and I want to apply for any visa in my life. Do you, do you get? And it was just easy peasy, like, because right there in Nigeria, you hear lots of stories. People tell you, oh, you have to have like five years travel experience. You have to do this and that. But it was just like easy peasy. You apply for the visa, went for biometrics, and in three weeks, it was all stamped myself, my wife, and my daughter. And this is something that, you know, people pray and fast and, you know, do lots of things to just go to embassy and get that stamp on their visa. But again, that's why I say information is very, very key. And if you are trying to do this, like, you could try different options because my first option was, you know, Canada. I, we were even on the um, express entry pool. Express but, entry. But, yeah, you know how things went with that. Mm-hmm. Because you know that um, there's now like more focus on the provincial nomination thing. So, I mean, I just left that in one corner <laughs> after we got this. So, like I said, don't put out, Waka Waka Doctor puts out lots of information. I saw the one you put out recently for UK, a UK school that um, allows installments, payments. Yeah, for, yeah. In, if you don't have, if you're on a tight budget and you find that that school has courses that you want to offer, what is stopping you? Put your things together, get your passport, start applying for your master's, pay the minimum amounts that is required for you to get, you know, the admission and start making your move. Wow. So again, like... <laughs> okay, so fantastic. Let me try and just do a rundown, a cap, okay. a recap of everything we've talked about for those who are just joining in. This is my friend, Peter, who lives in the UK moved um, from Nigeria to the UK in 2020, studied microbiology, and now works in the UK as um, an auditor in an accounting firm. Got his job directly from Nigeria, and they sponsored him and brought him down to the UK. All he needed to do was go online to check the shortage occupational list, SOL, Um, It's on Google. It's also on the gov.uk website. The list is very, very long. Mm -hmm. He just went through it, saw what he wanted to do on that list, looked for companies that could help, um, that had such positions, did the search, um, started applying for jobs, you know, dusted his CV, reshaped his CV, started applying for jobs continuously, made 400 applications before he got this one they sponsored everything and he was able to bring his family along to to the uk as well so what i've learned from this is consistency you need Mm -hmm. to continue you need to continue so you get the result don't stop but you can do it okay shortage occupational list s o l shortage occupational list it's on the gov.uk website it's also on google just say shortage occupational list uk okay and that's how he moved to the uk and he's been there for two years now he's enjoying himself in the next few years you'll be able to apply for citizenship boom (laughs) (laughs) look uh, thank you thank you very much peter is there any other thing you want to tell people i mean uh, covered it and you've also summarized it you know being consistent if you want to come through the job routes um, it sounds easy on paper when i just mentioned it i applied for jobs and got it but of course there's a process to that and then secondly you know follow like get be on the lookout follow people that you know are putting out information follow people with no road exactly people are putting out information consistently so that you can keep yourself updated and then also I mean, you may not just put your eggs in one basket. Like in my own case, I was trying Canada, Australia, the UK. Do you get? You have like numerous amount of information out there for different countries and different routes. So people can just, you know, while you're trying this, also be looking at this other option in case, you know, anyone that comes out first. I mean, you make the move. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I know that you're not on Instagram. And you're using your wife's Instagram page. So can you do us a favor? I'm going to leave this okay. video right here on my channel. Okay. People might still have questions to ask. Sure. So if people are asking questions, could you just help answer the questions under the comment section, if that's possible, please? Oh, sure, sure. Perfect. So guys, if you have questions, just put down your questions in the comment section 
um, on this video. I'm going to leave this video on my Instagram feed and I'm also going to post it on YouTube. It's going to answer every question you have here on Instagram and I will answer every question you have um, on YouTube, okay? So please, let's do this. You can do it. You can get a job yeah. in the UK as well. The shortage occupational list is, is something, it's important and the list is long. Yeah. So go through it and get it done. Thank you very much, Vita, and thanks for thanks. Uh, welcome, uh, coming. Thanks, thanks for coming on my show. We'll talk. We'll talk yeah. pretty soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank All you. right. Bye. 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 Bye.